Chief Sami Taraki is a leader of a Maasai community of about 9,000 people who live some 75 miles outside Nairobi in the Rift Valley. He has seen the change in the local weather patterns in his lifetime. Before the weather became so unpredictable, this would have been the best time of year for a Maasai herdsman. The chief has had a dramatic loss of cattle in the last nine or ten years. The remains of the hundreds of animals Chief Sami has lost to drought over the last few years are nearby. A constant reminder of what he has lost. This calf died in April. This was a milking calf. And the mother was milking on this one. It died with a small calf. This one, can you see a small calf here? Yeah. This one, this was a, a, a cow and a, a calf. When you see a cow dying, you feel like dying too. Because it is a part of your life. The, the master say, uh, cows are a part of, of your life. This is a tragedy for one man and his people. And the experts who say climate change is a key factor behind the problems in Kenya believe it could also hit food production in more developed countries. Warm, drought-prone areas of Australia, Argentina and the United States are at risk. And they are all countries that export large quantities of food across the globe. Half the world's population could face a climate-induced food crisis by the end of the century. In more temperate climates, the consequences of climate change are unlikely to be so extreme. But some farmers say the effects on agriculture are already clear to see. The Leckford estate in England is a farm of about 4,000 acres that is owned and run by the British supermarket chain Waitrose. More than a thousand Frisian cattle produce more than five million liters of milk a year. And apples, pears, mushrooms and cereals are also grown here. Farmer Ian Dalton says that global warming is already having an effect. During the 2007-2008 sort of years and, and the harvest of 2007, we've seen huge volatility. So, you know, prices of wheat doubling and then halving in, in less than 12 months is an extraordinarily difficult position for, for farmers to, to manage their businesses. Ian has seen the prices he has paid for a ton of wheat swing from $140 up to $300 and then back down again to $140 in the last two years. One of the issues that farmers have got to face is this volatility. And what it does to me is make it very difficult to decide what to grow next year. And that will affect the yield. Many believe that the volatility in the grain markets is the result, at least in part, of climate change. 
whether you call it global warming, global change is, is certainly having what I appear to, what I think is having a significant effect in terms of this volatility. We've been growing apples on the farm for, for the best part of 70 years and we are seeing this trend to earlier springs. What we've had is a very wet and cold winter after a run of very mild winters. And it's this changeability, this volatility. You know, we seem to set another meteorological record every other month these days. Uh, and I think that is all part of global warming. There is only one planet. There is only um, limited amount of the resources we use. We will have to reduce our own consumption. If we keep growing as we are, we'll need two or three planets, never mind one. So even in more temperate parts of the world, climate change is set to make agriculture even less predictable for farmers and for consumers. For shoppers, wherever their food has been grown, there will be less certainty about the availability of food, its quality, and its price. Some of the world's key natural resources needed for food production may also be under threat. One largely unseen, unnoticed, but crucially important commodity essential for today's industrialized, intensive form of agriculture is oil.